Revolutionary Talk for Revolutionary Times. Promoting peace, liberty, and prosperity around the clock. LibertyTalk.fm. Welcome to Medicine and Paul, where it's all about living the solutions. Today I have a really important and special guest on. Her name is Dr. Marlene Siegel. She's a doctor of veterinary medicine who has her own practice in Florida. It's called the Pasco Veterinary Medical Center. And I met Dr. Siegel at a conference this past summer. And what struck me about her practice was that it was an integrative practice. We all, I mean, most of us have pets and they're part of our family. And I lost the cat a couple of years ago, and I attributed to the diet that he was on. And it was really fascinating because Dr. Siegel did a whole presentation of how do you keep your pet healthy? How do you extend their lives? And I think we all want that. But one of the things that was interesting was how it relates to us as human beings, because we really are connected in more ways than people think. So what, Dr. Siegel, I wanted to wait. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show and spending quality time with us. I know you're really busy. Oh, I'm just honored to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Well, it's my pleasure. When reading your bio, I was struck by the fact that you're a Renaissance woman. You just, you're just, you just don't do veterinary medicine. You do other things. So let's talk about how you got started. Why? How did you go into veterinary medicine? Because you didn't start off that way, did you? Well, I started in veterinary medicine. I wanted to be a vet since the time I could crawl. I played with stuff animals instead of stuffed dolls. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I was destined, even though there was nobody in my family that did anything in animals. My mom's side of the family didn't even like animals. So it was an innate knowledge when I came into this universe that I was really destined to do something with animals. And I was laser focused all the way through school. Now, when I was graduating high school, I graduated a little early and a lot of my friends were, were in emergency medicine. At that time, they called it an EMT-1 and an EMT-2. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, it's a paramedic. And so with them working on ambulances, I hung out with them a lot. So when I was 17, I actually went to EMT school. And I became an EMT-1. And then I became, an, at that time, an EMT-2, which was now what we call paramedics. And I was the youngest female param- I was the youngest paramedic, but I was also the youngest female paramedic in the state of Florida. So I loved emergency medicine, but I was still always geared towards doing animals. So I used my EMT license and I worked on ambulances and emergency rooms all the way through my undergraduate. And then it was time to apply for veterinary school. Of course, I quit working and got serious about going to school. So that was my start, was actually emergency medicine. And after graduating veterinary school, I was doing the traditional allopathic, really had, didn't even know anything about integrative medicine, let alone holistic medicine. And I worked at an emergency clinic. I had a daytime clinic that I was working at. So I was very, very involved, still using my emergency medicine background, but also doing regular day-to-day care. And, you know, if you ask me how practice was and how successful I was, I thought I was doing well. I would say 50% of my cases had really good outcomes. All of them had some kind of improvement, but we still dealt with chronic disease and chronic relapsing. And then I ended up having an emergency situation with one of my own show horses where she was uh, showing an injury in her she called, she had an injury in her neck, which we didn't know at the time, and it caused her to rear in the arena with my daughter on board. And this horse ended up being pulled over backwards and somehow, uh, just by truly a miracle, did not crush my daughter. And so we got home and we thought it was just a fluke incident that she reared with my daughter hanging from the reins, pulled her over backwards. But we came to find out that there was something really wrong with her neck and veterinarians thought that she was having seizures or spasms or whatever she was having. They said she wasn't ever going to be able to be safely ridden and that they would uh, recommend that I either put her out to pasture or that I have her put down. And I think that was the turning point for me because here I had this magnificent horse who literally saved my daughter's life. She could have easily crushed this child if she didn't do anything to push herself in the opposite direction of her rider, but she really, really 
had to work hard while she's being, she's standing up on her back legs, being pulled over backwards, and she still managed to squat and push herself to the opposite side of where my daughter was falling. Mm -hmm. So I saw, I stand right in front of her, so I saw this horse with conscious intention try to avoid her rider, knowing she was going to go over. And so there was nothing that I was going to stop at to fix this horse. And being told, I'm sorry, there's nothing more that we can do, was just not an acceptable answer. And I think for many people who end up doing really remarkable things with their life, really out-of-the-box thinkers, people that just are pushed to go beyond what they ever thought they could do, almost everybody has a story. Mine, thank God, wasn't anybody getting killed, and it wasn't a health issue for anybody in our family except for my four-legged daughter, <laughs> my horse. And and that was the impetus to really say, you may not have the answer, but there's an answer out there. And I just knew with all my heart that there was something I could do. It just didn't exist in the Western training. And so I first contacted my personal chiropractor, who a couple of years earlier had become certified in doing animal chiropractics. And I gave him a call and told him what the situation was. And he came out and worked on her. And I will tell you to this day, I have never worked on an animal, dog, cat, horse, whatever, that was more painful than she was. And, and what a heart for this animal was still willing to go into the show ring and do her job with that degree of pain. It was just heartbreaking to watch her in that much pain. So I started working on her, and I started with chiropractic work and worked on her every day, worked on her during all the shows, and was unable to change her nutrition while she was in the show arena because the show barns are really strict with what they feed their horses, which sadly is the wrong thing to feed them, but that's what they do. And so it wasn't until I uh, was really able to take her out of the show arena that I was able to make huge strides for her. But that being said, five months after being told that she would never be ridden again and she would never be able to be shown again, she and my youngest daughter went on to win the United States Youth Reserve National Championship. Now, she wasn't 100% yet. There was still a lot of work that I needed to do, but she was definitely sound and was able to go in, and she reserved national against the entire United States best competing horses and riders is a huge statement. And uh, thank God she's still in my backyard. Uh, we still ride every once in a while and go out and play, but she has a forever home. That's an amazing story. And mm -hmm. I don't, and you can apply that to, to medicine as well. It's that, that extra step of someone telling you that it's going to be, there's nothing you can do. It happened with my mom actually, where she was diagnosed mm -hmm. with a brain tumor. And I asked, I had the nerve to ask the neurologist how, you know, her prognosis was. And he's like, oh, she's going to die. And I'm a doctor. And that's how he approached it. And we didn't take that. We kept going. And my mom died seven years later of something completely different. And we mm -hmm. went nutrition. We did holistic. We did a lot of things outside the box in addition to standard treatment. But it just opened my eyes to the, the, the alternative out there. That, you know, we live Absolutely. in a very limited environment in terms of medicine and veterinary medicine as well, where it's all about drugs, it's all about medication, it's about, you know, dotting eyes and following an algorithm. And because you are, you, you, your mind is open to Eastern and West, Western medicine, but the first question I'm always asked is, do you get any pushback from your colleagues? Are there other veterinarians that give you a hard time or somehow not willing to go along with you? So interesting question because uh, I think a lot of what our training is, is pretty narrow-minded. That being said, we're seeing an evolution in our client base. Mm. And this evolution are people that are just not willing to take a pill for an L any longer. And they're out there seeking alternatives. They're on the Internet doing Dr. Google. They're going to Amazon and buying herbs and homeopathics. And so they're really pushing the envelope. They're basically telling our industry, we want something different. Mm -hmm. So there is a holistic veterinary association, and it's been established for quite some years now. And I think that's the cutting edge, like in any field of anything. There's those cutting edge people that 
are the trendsetters. They're the ones out there making those changes first. And so they've been out there doing things for some time. There's a colleague of mine. He was the first person to really embrace acupuncture. And he has written the most books on acupuncture. He's currently retired, but just a plethora of knowledge. And back when he started 20 plus years ago, it was not popular. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of pushback from the boards. That's where you get most of the problems is that they're trying to enforce the standard of care. And so alternative medicine is not looked upon fondly in the the, the uh, governing boards. So you got to be a little careful not to make too much of a wave and bring too much attention to yourself. But I think we're also moving into an era of cooperation. We've lived in millenniums of worlds where there's been competition in every aspect of life. And I personally believe, along with Greg Braden, some other wonderful metaphysical teachers and leaders, that we are shifting into a more cooperative universe. So my approach when I talk to my colleagues and I'm speaking at conferences is not to try to say that group is wrong and this group is right because that's a very competitive look. There are wonderful things about Western medicine that I'm so grateful we have the opportunity to use. Uh, we use x-rays. We use ultrasound. These are Western diagnostics. Mm-hmm. We also use thermography. We do surgery. That's why I was late getting on the show with you today <laughs> as I was literally doing a cancer surgery. So what a wonderful opportunity to be able to integrate the best of both worlds. And I think over time, as we invite the Western world to meet us halfway, I think we're going to start seeing a whole different kind of medicine, one where we embrace the best of both worlds, which includes diet and digestion and nutrition and detoxification and mitochondrial repair, all of these pieces that we know in integrated medicine are so critical. These are going to be things that we're going to see coming together. Uh, I've written a program that teaches veterinarians how to integrate alternative medicine into their practices. And they can start out with just dipping their toe in. Mm -hmm. They don't have to embrace the whole kit and caboodle, but if they start out doing maybe one or two things and they see how well it works, then they're going to be encouraged to do something else and then the next thing and the next thing. And I have a sister program for the pet owner, which is the same thing. It's how can we integrate alternative therapies into your world? so that the pet owner is empowered to be able to not only enhance the life of their pets, but these are all pieces of equipment that and lifestyles that they can do for themselves. So what a win-win. Yeah, they may get a uh, – we're big users of uh, PEMF devices, and we use a machine called a magnosphere. And the beauty is the parent sits in the magnosphere with their pet. And so everybody gets a treatment, and they can feel the differences. They come out of there going, wow, I feel so much more relaxed. I I feel better. And so we're able to actually touch both the pet parent and the pet, which is encouraging even the pet parent to make changes in their own lifestyle. That's pretty awesome. We're making a big impact in the world. I love it. Because the more the pet parent changes, let's say they use three or four less toxic things in their home, or they start eating more organically, they clean more organically. Yes, it started because of the animal, but they're now doing that for themselves because they're seeing the changes that the animal's making. Now they're taking probiotics themselves. Uh, and, And we only really focus on fermented foods and fermented products because those are the natural probiotics, not the synthetics that are developed in a laboratory. So we're seeing people making major shifts in their lives along with their pet lives. And I think that's really where the the the, the amazingness is happening. Mm -hmm. And so there so think about it this way. The more organic a household becomes, the less toxins and waste and damage to the environment that they're creating as well. So for me, it's a big snowball. It starts with the pet. It goes into the pet parents and their family. And then, of course, they're affecting their neighbors and their friends. It kind of goes out into a more logarithmic expansion. And then, of course, they're taking better care of the environment as well. On that note, let's take a break. Uh, you're listening to Medicine on Call. <laughs> Are 
Are you having problems with persistent bad breath, constant throat clearing, hoarseness, a cough that won't go away, a sore throat, or a feeling that something's always stuck in your throat? Why not find out what the problem is so it can be fixed? At Peace Tree ENT Center, we believe in taking time to work with our patients as a team to get to the root of the problem. Make an appointment today to see why Peach Tree ENT Center is where patient care counts. Call 404-591-9100 or visit us at peachtreeentcenter.com. From treatment of sinusitis with balloon dilation to minimally invasive office procedures to correct snoring, Peach Tree ENT Center offers state-of-the-art care. We also specialize in price transparency. You'll know the cost of our ENT services before they're rendered, whether you have a high deductible plan or no insurance at all. Make an appointment today to find out why Peachtree ENT Center is where patient care counts. Call 404-591-9100 or visit us at peachtreeentcenter.com. Welcome back to Medicine on Call. We're having a really interesting conversation with Dr. Marlene Siegel. She's the host of Pet Pet Star TV. She has her own private uh, veterinary medicine practice in Florida. And before the break, we were talking about the, the, the importance of the gut and the importance of what you put in your body. One of the things I noticed, the parallel between the disease in our pets and in humans, have you also seen an increase in in diabetes and um, heart disease and other things that we as, uh, you know, humans have been experiencing, and I believe it's all nutritionally based, most of it. Are you seeing that also in the pet world? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Right now, I think the statistics for humans is that one out of two males and one out of three females have cancer. And, of course, the rate of chronic degenerative diseases from dementia, Alzheimer's, to diabetes, obesity, uh, autoimmune diseases in humans just skyrocketing in numbers we've never seen before. And with all that, dogs have the highest rate of cancer of any mammal on the planet. I didn't know that. They they clock in at one out of 1.65 dogs getting cancer and one out of three cats getting cancer. But some other really shocking statistics that you really don't hear out there very much is that We've also lost 40% of the vertebrate species on the planet. Dr. Zach Bush is a phenomenal entrepreneur, MD, scientist, inventor, and he has a couple of products that we've been beta testing in our animals, and he has the research and data to back this up. There have been over 40% of the vertebrate species, just think about that, that's almost 50%, of the vertebrate species on the planet are now extinct. And we know that the reproduction rate in humans is is just plummeted. Well, according to Dr. Bush, if we don't make some serious changes, we could have an extinct population in as little as 70 years. Wow. That's a staggering concept to think about. So we don't have the luxury of, years and years to decide what we want to do and how we want to clean up our act here. Mm -hmm. we got to really get on the stick. And I think any time that we have something that is really horrific, those are the things that cause us to get out of our comfy sandbox and step into that power of, of thinking, of creating, of resolving, of just being in, in a mindset of we're going to fix this thing and the best and most creative ideas and the solutions come when you have the most extreme challenges. Don't you agree? Absolutely agree. And yeah, we have so, the power to make the change actually. Absolutely. And we have our intuition and we have these wonderful pieces that come to us um, I don't even question where they come from. I just, I trust that when I go into my higher consciousness and that higher power, that answers come, and they do. So I am a total advocate that we take the things that are challenging, the things that we don't like, the things that are not going so well, and we utilize that 
as the launch pad for going into what we do want. You know, you, you can't really figure out what you don't want or, or what you do want, rather, until you really see what you don't want. Exactly. If you just stay kind of in this this zone of just mediocrity, then what are you going to get more? You're going to get more mediocrity. But when something really pushes you, something really big happens in your life and it says, this is not acceptable, like me being told that Lily should be put down or retired. That wasn't acceptable. That horse saved my daughter's life. And there was nothing that was going to stop me from fixing her. That was just plain and simple. So no matter how busy I was, no matter what else was on my plate, that became my priority. And that took me into alternative medicine in such a big way that we practice, in my practice, we have more alternative tools than any practice in the entire country. I'd almost say in the entire world, but I'm not sure what's out there in some of the other countries. But we have it in one spot. There's a lot of people doing a lot of different things, Mm -hmm. but we're doing it all in one location. And every year I'm looking for something new. What's another thing that we can add to our toolbox? And it is remarkable. We are seeing cancer resolved. We really are. I'm not saying 100% of the cases, but enough to encourage me to say there are solutions out there. Well, but before we get, because our next break, I want to come back and talk about your modalities so we can get more into the meat of that, because I think that that is something you can use and extrapolate to the human humanity, you know, humans versus cats. Absolutely. Pets. But talk Absolutely. a little bit about food, because genetically modified food has been one of those innovations that they've tried to sell as the best thing since sliced bread. And I don't think it's, it's uh, panning out to be that way. We're seeing the use of more pesticides. And I don't know if I know it's killing the gut flora, but are you thinking along the lines of that? Well, chemical toxicity is GMO in your opinion. I know the jury's still out for some folks, but what's your opinion on GMO? Is it good or bad? No, without a doubt, it's the most toxic, deadly thing that we can have ever introduced into our environment, without a doubt. And one of the biggest things, and a lot of people haven't been taught about this but it actually interrupts the shikimate pathway, which is just just suffice it to say that the pathway that allows us to um, maintain a healthy immune system mm-hmm. is wiped out. And if we don't restore that, the amount of DNA damage is going to be irreversible. So it's really, really important that we we start cleaning up this environment. We have to heal the gut. The gut is 80% of our immune system. And if we don't start there, we're going to have so much genetic mutation and so much genetic damage that whatever we evolve into, I don't know what that's going to look like. So we really need to take some very serious actions and be able to make a decisive Put your foot down and say, I am not willing to, and as GMOs are, for me, it is one of my biggest stance, is we just don't allow genetically modified ingredients in our diet as much as we can possibly avoid it. Well, I think that's a statement that we need to let stand and let people think about, let it sink in while we take our next break. You're listening to Medicine on Call. health insurance was the promise of Obamacare. But for many, the government mandate caused more problems than it solved. This is Dr. Elena George from Medicine on Call, and I want to tell you about a truly affordable alternative allowed under Obamacare, Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare bypasses doctor and hospital panels, giving you the freedom to choose. And with a maximum of $500 out of pocket per person and 100% coverage up to $1 million per year per occurrence, you can rest assured knowing you and your family are protected. Coverage starts as low as $107 per month and also includes dental, vision, pharmacy, and holistic care. Liberty HealthShare puts you back in charge of your health. Visit them online at libertyoncall.org. Again, for a true affordable alternative to Obamacare, visit libertyoncall.org 
or call toll-free 1-800-714-6993 today. Welcome back to Medicine on Call. This is Dr. Lena George and my special guest, Dr. Marlene Siegel. And before the break, we were talking about food as, I think, as a weapon, actually. And it's one of the mm-hmm. things that's causing disease, and it's glossed over. I had, initially, when GMOs came out and they were becoming very popular, I went on a radio show, and I got really just almost chastised by the guest host because I said, the, the studies have shown that the yield, I mean, the whole purpose of it was to create more food, make it more resistant, make it easier to grow in hostile environments, but the yield was lower. And then there's some, mm-hmm. some like the India, in India where they have rice where they can't use the seeds to produce more rice, so they have to keep buying from a company in order to keep their livelihood going. This is not a system that's built on abundance. It's actually the opposite. And now we're talking about the devastation on our on our bodies. And I think our pets are like canaries in the coal mine. Whatever happens to them, they're the front line. It's coming for us too, don't you think? Oh, 100%. We've lost 40% of the world's world's vertebrate species. And the average person isn't aware of that. Mm -hmm. So they're going along just thinking everything's hunky-dory. Our reproductive rate in humans has plummeted and that's where that statistic that Dr. Bush came out with is that in 70 years, we could technically be a species that is extinct. And now we're just talking on the human side, where if you have less population being born, then you are, then your decline, you're going to go extinct. And we are on that pathway. And our animals are showing us that. The bees we, I don't think there's anybody on the planet that doesn't know the bees are in trouble. They pollinate 70% of our food. Mm-hmm. So if we lose our bees, we're going to starve. There's not going to be food for us. These aren't law law conversations. These are really serious conversations that we all, as a community, as a human species, we need to start taking control and saying we are going to make different decisions. And for those people who aren't aware yet, really need to start spending some time learning about GMOs. Jeffrey Smith, wonderful. The Institute for Responsible Technology has phenomenal information. This man's been following it for 19 years since the onset of it. And then uh, there's just a lot of other powerhouses out there that are really bringing this information to the forefront so people can get it, whether it's in the vaccines or the food or in the environment. Just tremendous amount of information that needs to be understood. And number one, we need to be making different decisions. Mm -hmm. You know, the cancer rates in men, humans right now, we said was one out of two. Women is one out of three. Dogs are one out of 1.65. That is a horrific rate. That's almost 100% of dogs are getting cancer. Mm -hmm. That's almost everything I see on a daily basis. I was late on our call today because I was dealing with a cancer patient. It's ridiculous. And we got to really start stopping and going, that is not acceptable. We're not just going to go, oh, look, we have more cancer. Let's make more cancer drugs. Let's make more hospitals. No, we need to start making some lifestyle changes and stop doing the things that are causing it. And one of the most important things is the damage that we're creating in our DNA from genetically modified foods. So if nothing else was done in this conversation, I would encourage people to make sure that no matter what touches your skin is organic, no matter what you put on your plate or your pet's plate is organic and no genetically modified organisms in the body, on the body, or in the environment. Period. End of story. That would be my very first thing. And I've got a five-step program, if you don't mind me sharing, that is um, it's really the foundation for how our lifestyles need to be. Now, I teach this to my pet parents, but, of course, it's something that they're going to employ. So number one is you got to stop polluting the environment and the body. And that is from things that you're breathing, things that you're touching, the EMF that's in the environment, the sprays and chemicals that you're using inside and outside your home. you got to clean all that up. And I also include our thoughts. you got to quit being negative. you got to really focus on what you do want, 
using what you don't want as the fulcrum for that. And then we need to make sure that we're providing all the essential nutrients that the body needs to do its job. It is not in our food any longer because of these genetically modified organisms, even if there were vitamins and minerals in the soil that the plant was supposed to be grown in, they're not taking it up because the GMOs are blocking those pathways. And so the third thing we want to do is heal the gut because we know 80% of the immune system lives in the gut. And then we want to make sure that we're detoxifying all six organs of elimination and we need to repair mitochondrial activity. That's just foundational. And mm-hmm. that's the program that I've come up with. And I walk people through how to do that for their pets. Here's the beautiful part. When they're doing it for their pets, they're doing it for themselves because they got to clean up the same environment that the pet's in, they're in. So how many lives are being touched that, God forbid, they would have been heading down a course that they don't want to be at, but because they cleaned up the environment for the pet, they've now reduced the level of toxicity. And they're more aware. They're eating better for themselves, and, they're, and their pets are eating better. Well, let me stop. I created a, a whole pet food line that is all grass-fed, free-range, with a superfood addition that it has all the essential vitamins, minerals, fatty acids, aminos, and superfoods. And, you know, not that I was out there to try to create and change the world, but I guess maybe I was. And so I just launched the products uh, literally in the past 30 days. Our, it's been a two-year process getting it going. But uh, just we have to make those changes. It's not an option any longer. We need to address all those five pathways. And uh, do you mind if I just let people download a free ebook which Absolutely. covers that? Yes, please do. So and, it, and tell us what those pathways are so people can get a better feel for what you mean. Sure. Step number one, stop polluting the body, and then I cover all the different ways to do that. And step number two is we've got to make sure that we're giving the body all the essential nutrients that it needs to do its job. Step number three is repair the gut. That's where 80% of the immune system lives. You've got to have a healthy gut. And then step number four is the detoxification pathways, and it's very, very involved, but so simple to do. Step number five in my program is repairing the mitochondria. That's the powerhouse of the cell, and that's where you really produce your antioxidants. And then I do have a sixth step for those people who are willing to go there, and that is to release the trapped emotions associated with the dis-ease. That's a whole we could spend hours and hours on that topic. Mm-hmm. But if anybody wants to, they can download my free ebook, which gives them those steps, and at least it's a start. And it is that holistic healingvet.com. Do you have show notes that you can actually, so I don't have to spell it? Sure. Okay. So it's holistichealingvet.com. It's a free ebook. They can download that and it gives them at least a general outline and pathway. I do consultations uh, to anybody around the world. I can't diagnose and treat unless I have an established physical relationship with that pet because I'm only licensed in the state of Florida to practice veterinary medicine. That being said, I can do consultations on general wellness and the steps that we need to take, which is still foundational. You've got to put these steps in place. You've got to make sure that you stop the pollution in the body. You have to make sure all the essential nutrients are there and the food and fuel source that we have developed provide all of that and then we repair the gut and have a process of doing that we detoxify the body we detoxify all six organs of elimination so we we detoxify the colon the kidneys the lungs the lymphatics the liver um, and the skin and we we focus on the liver because that's the most important but all of them get addressed and then we repair the mitochondria so that it's able to do its job. That's the energy source of the entire body. We make sure that they're revved up and doing their job, and then we release trapped emotions. So it's not a hard process, but it's a very mindful and very thoughtful process, and there's no shortcutting it. You can't do one and not fix the other because Mm -hmm. they're all interrelated. That makes sense? It certainly does. How long, on average, does something like that take? I know it's a process, so it's not overnight. But on average, how long would you, would it take before you've, in your experience, started to see an improvement in the pet? Oh, very rapidly. I do live blood analysis as one of our diagnostic tools, and we'll see changes in as little as three days. Oh, that's fast. So when we get them on our diet and, and the supplementation, the, the fuel that we use, we'll see changes in 72 hours. 
maybe sooner, but I'm not testing them any sooner. So mm-hmm. I'll give myself the grace to say at least in 72 hours, we see magnificent changes. And people can go on my website and actually see those cases. I have them posted for people to be able to learn from. So I think it's really important. Um, some of the other therapies that we do here on our diagnostics, we do thermography, which is looking at temperature changes in the body to be able to see where there's inflammation and toxins. We do live blood analysis, which is looking at the blood and seeing what is happening at the physiological level of the blood. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we do traditional blood work. Uh, We do another modality that is amazing, and I can do this for people if they just mail me hair and saliva samples, and it's called bioenergetic testing, and we're able to actually look at multiple aspects of the body from the DNA that is sent to us, and we're looking at vitamin mineral deficiencies, we're looking at organ disruptions, we're looking at toxins, so we can really see a very overall general look at as what's going on with that individual and prioritize what needs to be cleaned up first mm-hmm. so that the body can start going back and doing its job. What is, so me, I love using that. Let me stop um, you for one, one second. What's mm-hmm. the most common toxin that you're seeing in, in folks when they send you, or even pets for that matter? Well, the most common thing that we're actually seeing right now is Lyme's disease and mycoplasma and mycotoxins. I think probably 80% of the animals that we're seeing, we have some form of, of Lyme's and, um, and mycoplasma, mycotoxins. So that's huge. And then the second most common thing that we see are deficiencies. These animals and people, because we do people as well, are deficient in aminos. And the aminos are your building block of the body, vitamins, minerals. um, They're just, it's incredible how deficient we're seeing. And I think most of that deficiency is coming because of that shikimate pathway that we introduced earlier. The glyphosate is actually blocking the ability to take up nutrients. So even if they're there, the body can't take them up from the food source. Now, for those who don't know... Well, let me just stop for the listeners who don't know what glyphosate is. It's the, it's Roundup. That's the, the weed killer. Ingredient Roundup, yeah. Correct, correct. So how do you reverse that? Is it probiotics? Is it, what's the main thing that you do to get that toxic or get that pathway to work again? Well, step number one, you got to stop polluting the body. Okay. You know, above and beyond all else, you have to really cut the sources off. And then, and we do all the things that are compromising the immune system. That's my step one process where we make sure that every area that we can address in the environment and in and on the pet, all of those are taken care of, including EMF, those electromagnetic frequencies that we get from our Wi-Fi and from the routers and 5G coming out. Mm -hmm. It's devastating. I was just on a wonderful summit uh, it was an EMF summit, and uh, Lloyd Burrell is the one that hosted that. It just ended, but they're going to have a replay weekend. If anybody wants to get a link to that, it's free. I'm happy to share that. Just send me an email. Uh, may I share an email address? Please do. Uh, P like in Paul, B like in Victor, M like in Mary, C like in Cat, the number four, the letter U like umbrella, at Pasco. I'm going to spell it. P like in Paul, A, S like in Sam, C like in Cat O, and then Vet, but what I am, B like in Victor, E, Edward, T, Tom, dot com. So it's pdmc 4 u at pascovet.com. Okay, cool. And I can uh, I can uh, send you a, a free link so that people can sign up and watch it for free. It is, it's really amazing information. But all of these areas we have to address all the things that are creating toxicity, and then we have to supply the body with all of the repair and nutrients that it needs to be able to do its job. The body is incredibly resilient, but we have to give it something to work with, and you've got to quit damaging it. You know, we we grew up in a society that we want to take a pill for an ill and we want to put a Band-Aid on the sore. We can't do that anymore. We have to really address the root cause of the problem, and we have to take a hard look at what are we doing to cause it? And once we address what we're doing to cause it, we can make a conscious choice on what we can do differently, and we make better choices. It's really not hard. It's incredibly easy. But it's the difference between choosing something good to feed your family and feed your pet 
versus something that's not. So that's why we came out with our own dog food line, our own supplementation line, which is as clean as we could possibly make it with the super nutrition to allow the body to do all the repair that it needs to do. Let's take our last break on that note and come back and pick pick that up where we left off. You're listening to Medicine on Call. From treatment of sinusitis with balloon dilation to minimally invasive office procedures to correct snoring, Peachtree ENT Center offers state-of-the-art care. We also specialize in price transparency. You'll know the cost of our ENT services before they're rendered, whether you have a high deductible plan or no insurance at all. Make an appointment today to find out why Peachtree ENT Center is where patient care counts. Call 404-591-9100 or visit us at peachtreeentcenter.com. Welcome back to Medicine on Call. Before the break, I wanted to I wanted to ask a question and I want to actually use this small segment to talk about some of the modalities so a few things that you mentioned that I'm really interested in. One would be the infrared treatment, infrared sauna. Is that something that you offer? Oh, absolutely. Tell us about um, that. Our infrared sauna, we have a couple of different kinds that we can use. There is a model that uh, if somebody sends me a, an email or a text or however they can get in contact with us, I will be happy to give them a link for this. But it's a little home model that people can use. It's extremely inexpensive and cost-effective, and uh, the animals do great in it. Um, so we believe in infrared sauna. I also, near and far, I believe both have their attributes. They work a little differently, but the one that I have available, it's like a little pup tent for people to use at home, that's a far infrared. And then we use a, a, a light that they can get from Home Depot to get their near infrared. Uh, at my office, we have a two-person cedar sauna, and that way people can go in with their pets. So that's a big modality. But we also use uh, – it's a machine called a um, – it, it, it's basically um, – trying to figure out how to describe it. Um, it has all of the spectrums of light and frequency. Uh, it's called a Theragem, and we use that as part of our modality – the whole concept, we have a salt booth. I'm actually sitting in my room where my salt booth is. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the things that we utilize are all geared to restoring mitochondrial activity and detoxifying the body, along with providing all the essential nutrients the body needs to do its job. So that's kind of the overview. But what else do we have? Uh, we have laser therapy. We have um, uh, a new laser treatment that is called a Weber laser. And it is incredible for treating cancer, absolutely incredible. And we can give uh, therapies intravenously through with the weather. It, it actually can go into the vein, uh, or we can go intra-abdominal, or we can go topical. It's incredible stuff. Um, what else do we have? Of course, we have different kinds of lasers. Uh, the salt therapy, I just mentioned. I'm sitting in my salt room right now. And we have our magnosphere, which is magnetic residence. Uh, that's another one of our main tools. How does that uh, work? What does it do from low, a cellular standpoint? Low frequency. These are at the peak of Tesla range, so these are the frequencies that the body produces. Mm. But things like EMF, electromagnetic pollution, throw those frequencies off. So what our magnosphere does, it actually entrains the energy to go back to the frequency that is healthy for it. So the body goes back into its normal function, and it doesn't take a lot to knock the body off. These are those man-made frequencies that are disresonant, and when we put an animal with its pet parent in our magnosphere, because everybody gets to go in, it's, it, it's something you sit inside of it, mm-hmm. and it produces the PMF waves, and it literally entrains the body to go back into an energetic balance. So these are very, very low frequencies, and incredibly effective, and we have uh, all kinds of different frequencies that we can choose from from a therapeutic, but this company also makes a home unit. So people can buy a unit for their house, and they get, I don't remember if it's three to five, maybe six frequencies, the ones that are most important for their issues. And 
at least with my clients, when they buy one of those machines for home use, we help go through what are going to be the most important frequencies that they need to have. And the whole family gets a treatment because, of course, the pet parent sits in there with their pet. Mm-hmm. These are amazing modalities that help to entrain the body to go back into resonance. Disresonance means the body is, uh, the cells are vibrating at a frequency that doesn't allow the cells to communicate with each other. So now you have chaos at the cellular level because the guy on the left can't speak to the guy on the right, so they don't know what they're doing. And some of these cells go, wow, I'm out here by myself. I'm isolated. I'm going to have to get as big and bad as I can get to try to survive. And there you have your cancer cells. And then so it's really a lack of communication right. because the body, when it's working normally, those cancer cells that we produce all the time, we get mutations all the time, but you have mechanisms that allow the body to recognize when a cell is abnormal and the cell recognizes when it's abnormal and it goes into apoptosis or it basically commits suicide because it says, oh, I'm not supposed to be here. I, something's wrong with me. And so the body and the cell itself have mechanisms to get rid of it. And that's how we stay healthy. Not that we never have cancer cells being produced. They just don't have a chance to develop. But when you have this whole entire dysregulation process going on, where now you get these cells that aren't able to communicate with the rest of the tribe, and they think they're out there all by themselves, and they're going, wow, if I'm going to survive, i got to get as big and bad as I can because I'm the only one here, and i got to hang in there long enough. Mm-hmm. So, I'm, of course, I'm making a little bit of an analogy there. But that's essentially what's happening with our cancer cells. They don't have the mechanism to know that they need to self-destruct, and they start to grow, and then they ultimately take over and kill the organism that they're ultimately which you're supposed to be living in symbiosis with. Well, and I have a, it makes perfect sense. We have about five minutes left. There's a couple more topics I wanted to hit quickly. And one is the grass-fed meat. I mean, people are always talking about plant-based diets and, and, you know, being a vegan, but that's not the only way to stay healthy, is it? I mean, if you do or eat a plant or a grass-fed, you know, beef or whatever, is that a bad thing? So I'm going to stick to talking about our animals, if you don't mind. No, don't worry. They are carnivores. They literally were designed by nature, by God, to eat another animal. That is what they do, Mm -hmm. and that is how they stay the healthiest. That is their species-appropriate diet. So if you take a dog or a cat, a cat is an obligate carnivore. That means they have no dietary requirement for carbohydrates, and a quality pet food would have about 1% carbohydrates. The average processed dog and cat food that is on the market right now range between 40 and 60% carbohydrates exceedingly high in sugar. That's what carbs are, right? They're sugar. Yeah. So now you're taking an animal that was designed to have around 1% carbohydrate in their natural diet, and you're feeding them 40 to 60% sugar. Well, what feeds cancer? Sugar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, that's why we came out with my own brand of dog food. It's, a, it's, not even, it's a raw diet, and it's for cats and dogs. Because, again, think about it. Do you ever see lions and tigers in the wild pass by food because it has a sign that says dog only. This is only for wolves. And if you're a cat, you can't eat that. You know, that's ridiculous. Animals in the wild eat another animal and they eat it in the state they killed it in. They don't drag it to a kibble processor and they don't package it in a bag and wait to eat it later. So they have to eat their meat in a raw state because they were designed for that. They don't have amylase. Dogs and cats do not have amylase in their saliva. That is the digestive enzyme that we have in our mouth that begins carbohydrate digestion. They don't have that because they were never designed to eat carbohydrates. So the diet that I've developed is a species-appropriate diet. It has the correct balance between the amount of fat and protein and uh, in, in, a, in bone, in a way, in organ meat, in a way that is balanced the way they would have eaten it in nature. So it's the most ideal diet for them. And then separately, we add our pet fuel, which is the essential vitamins, minerals, the fatty acids we add separately, and then all the superfoods, the uh, the amazing antioxidants that help to overcome a lot of the deficiencies that are in uh, the traditional foods that we're eating right now, which are tremendously deficient in nutrition. In the last minute that we have left, can you please go over how my listeners can contact you, buy your food, I the would product? be honored. Thank you so much. Uh, 
I'm going to spell it because it's the easiest way to do it. Uh, the name of my hospital is Pasco Veterinary Medical Center. Pasco is P-A-S-C-O. And the other thing they can do is download holistichealingvet.com. Download the app and we'll be able to stay in contact with you. Those are the two easiest ways to do it. And if you have show notes, can you uh, spell that out for them? Will do. And I understand there's a conference, an integrative conference that you may be participating in coming up. Is that right? That's correct. I'm actually going to a conference. Well, there's so many things. I have the holistic uh, health conference that is being held in Canada. If anybody goes to my website, we'll start posting all those links to all the different things. So that one's in Canada. I'm also going to a conference in San Diego that is on the Weber laser that um, is all about the type of laser therapies that are out there. What else is going on? My website has a plethora of information, and we have videos and case stories. So it's pascovet.com, super easy, and there's also a link there to email me. I cannot give out medical advice without establishing a client-patient relationship, but I can do a consultation for just general wellness. Well, Dr. Siegel, thank you so much for taking the time. I learned a great deal. I'm looking forward to you know, getting your product from my cat because I want to make sure that she stays as healthy as possible. And you are what you eat, apparently. And it's time for Absolutely. us to really start making conscious choices. And as our pets go, so should we. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much for doing this interview. It's my pleasure. Have a blessed day. And thank you, everybody, for listening to Medicine on Call. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And also download, become a subscriber to the podcast. Um, so I hope you guys have a great day. And once again, thank you for listening. Revolutionary talk for revolutionary times. Promoting peace, liberty, and prosperity around the clock. LibertyTalk.fm.